Let's go JavaScripting! Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host, The Virtual White, aka Mike Smith, and today we're talking about bitwise operators. Yes, today I'm going to show you how to AND bits together. I'm going to show you how to OR bits together. And I'm going to show you how to exclusive OR bits together. But most importantly, I'm going to show you what all three of those statements actually mean. You want to see how they work? Let's get started. First off, a bit is the smallest piece of measurement that we have within a computer. And it's normally on or off and is represented within computers as a one or zero. So when we say bitwise operators, we're talking about operating at the bit level with ones and zeros. So both, all three of these, the AND, the OR, and the exclusive OR will compare two different bits and the, the, the comparison of those two different bits will produce then another type of bit. And as you see on the screen here, I've got what's called a truth table for, for both the AND or an XOR. And this truth table basically says, I've, in, the, in the upper, uh, in the first row there, I've got the possible values of one particular bit. And of course, a bit, again, is just only one or zero. And in the first column, I have got the values of another bit. Again, bits are one or zero. And the combination of these particular bits or the comparison of these two bits will result in a particular number. An AND, an OR, an exclusive OR gives you both those numbers. And as we go through the process here, I'll be using this truth table to show you the difference. So let's get started, first of all, with the AND. Now, the AND basically says that if I take one, the values of one bit and compare them to the values of another bit, then if any of those values contains a zero, the final number is zero. If both of them contain a one, then the final number is one. So you can think of it this way. Again, if both of the bits have one, it's a one. Otherwise, it is completely zero. So let's now go to our code and let's take a look at what the AND looks like. So what I've got here is a very simple little uh, code here. This print binary, I'll show you, I'll, I'll explain that here in a little bit, uh, little bit later. Here's my first number, it's called number one. Here's my second number, it's number two. And here is the bitwise operator for the AND. It's a single ampersand. And this is basically going to say, okay, compare my number to your number and produce or output another number. Now, what do these what these numbers have to be? These numbers have to be 32-bit numbers, or at least they'll be converted into 32-bit numbers if they're not already. If you have like a big int, it will be converted to 32-bit numbers, and you will lose those other 32-bit, those most significant 32 bits. So everything operates on 32-bit numbers, so it makes a comparison for those 32 different bits. So my number here is going to be a 32-bit number representing one. My num your number is a representative bit bit representation for the number two. And when I add them together, I should get the end number. And then I've got a little console.log that will display all the different results. So let's see how it works. Let's flip over to node. Let's clear our screen off here. And we go to node and. And there we are. See my number? This is the binary representation of the 32-bit number of one. This is the binary representation of the 32-bit number of two. And the final number was zero. Why is zero? Remember, when you're comparing bits, if, in, if any bit happens to be zero, the final answer is zero. Both bits must be one for the final answer to be one. So in this case, we compared the first bit, which was one, with the first bit, which is zero, so that came to be zero. The first bit here for, uh, for my number is zero. The, first, the, second, excuse me, the second bit, the second bit for my number is zero. The second bit for number, from your number is one. One and a zero is a zero, because it must contain a zero. So with that knowledge, and of course all the rest of them are zeros, so it's all zeros. So with that knowledge, if we go back to our code and we type in your number three, we may get something just a little bit different. Let's flip back over to save it and flip back over to node. And let's take another look at it. Sure enough, we got a little bit different number here. Now why? Because the first bit in my number is one, the first bit in your number is also one. So again, one and one, always gives one. Anytime you see a zero, it always gives a zero, no matter what. So you got a zero and a one, so that gives a zero. So that shows you what AND does. So again, it takes it each, it, it will convert your variables into a 32-bit number, and it will take each individual bit and do that 
and, and again, the and is if the any zero is appears, it's always zero. Both bits must be one for it to return a one. Next, let's take a look at or. So now let's take a look at or. Now, or kind of works, you can almost kind of think of it as opposite of and. With the or, both no, if both numbers are zero, you get a zero, just like the and. Both numbers are one, you get a one, just like the and. But if any number or any comparison contains a one, you always get a one. So remember with and, you got zeros if anything contained a zero, if any comparison contained a zero. But with or, you get a one if anything or any comparison contains a one. So two zeros, get a zero. Anything else, you always get a one. So now that we got that, let's flip over to our code and let's take a look at the OR statement. Here is the OR. It's just a single vertical bar line. That's all there is to it. And again, it works exactly the same way as the AND does. It takes my number and ORs it with your number and it outputs another number. And that's pretty much it. And again, just like the AND, it's, it's going to be, everything is going to be converted to 32-bit numbers. So let's flip back over to Node. Let's clear off the screen. And let's see what it does. So here's my number one again. Same things we had with the end. There's the one. Here's my number two. Same thing again, the zero one. But now my or number is three because it has two there. Again, why? Well, my first bit was one in my number. My first bit in your number is zero. But if with an or statement or with an or, anytime there is a one, you always get a one. The second bit in my number is a zero. The second bit in your number is a one. So you get a one. So that shows that basically the or worked. Since I had ones in both of these first and second bits, I always got a one. Zeros are all everywhere else. So I ended up getting zeros. So if we change that, then let's flip back over to our code. If we change your number to a three, like we did in the end, should we get something different? Well, let's find out. Let's flip back over to save it, flip back over to node. Let's clear the screen off, go to no or. And if my number is one, your number is three, we still get a three. Why? Well, because the representation of three is a one, one at the very end. So all these numbers haven't changed whatsoever. The only thing that's changed was this first bit. I've got two ones, and so I got a one. Because anytime a one appears, it's always one. You have to have two zeros in an or for a zero to appear. And that's pretty much all there is for the OR. Next, let's take a look at the exclusive OR. Now, exclusive OR works just a little differently than AND or OR. It was fairly easy with AND or OR to figure out what's going on. But with exclusive OR, this is how the comparisons work. If the numbers that are compared are exactly the same, you always get a zero. So zero compared to zero will get you a zero. And one compared to one will get you a zero. If the numbers are different, zero and one, or zero and one, whatever, there are always one. So that's what it is with the exclusive or. If the numbers are exactly the same, you always get a zero. If the numbers are different, you always get a one. Let's take a look and see what the code looks like. Let's flip back over to our code. And here is the exclusive or. It's just basically a little caret symbol at the very top there. And again, works just like the and, works just like the or. It takes the 32-bit number of my number and exclusive ors it with the 32-bit number, your number, to get the XOR number. And that's pretty much it. So let's flip back over to Node and let's see it in action. Let's clear our screen off and let's go to NOR XOR. Alrighty, so our number, first number started off at 1, our second number started off at 2, and our final number ended up being 3. You know, just like the OR. Why did this happen? Because we had a 1 and a 0 in the first bit positions, that gave us a 1. Because remember, those numbers are different. 1 and 0 are different, so we always get a 1 when the numbers are different. Here's a zero and a one. And again, that gives us the one because they're different. All these zeros gave us a zero. So, you know, you're saying that this is exactly the same thing as an or. Well, let's take a quick look at that. Let's flip back over to our code and let's change that to a three. Save it, flip back over to node, clear the screen off, take a look at it. Aha, see it's now changed. My number is one, your number is three, but now the XOR number is two. Why? Because that first bit position has ones in both of them. And if both of them are the same, it always produces a zero. So this ends up being different. This is how it's a little bit different from the OR. 
one and three gave me three inside of the, when using the or, but one and three, when using the exclusive or, gives me the two. Now, one thing I want to kind of show you here that's kind of really funky is when you're having to deal with negative numbers, and that works both, both also with the or and the exclusive and the and, began the or and exclusive or. I want to show you kind of what a representation of a negative number looks like. I'm going to change my first number to negative one, for example. Let's save that. And let's go over to node and let's go, let's clear our screen off to the exclusive or. This is what a negative number looks like inside of a 32-bit number. And, and why is that? We're used to basically what's called two's complement uh, notation uh, for representation of a negative uh, number. So uh, I'm not going to go into two's complement. You can look that up on Google. You know, that's, that's no big deal there. But this is kind of show you the representation of what a negative number looks like inside the computer. So when we're exclusive ordering all of this, it kept the, all the negative numbers. It did a zero for this one and this one because we have the first and second bits here because the first and second bits were all ones. And when you have a comparison of the same number, you always get zeros. So if you exclusive or a negative one and a three, you get a negative four. What happens if you exclusive or two negative numbers together? Let's save it. Let's go over to node. Let's clear the screen off. Take a look at it. The negative one and negative three gave me a two. Why? Because notice we have all these negative numbers here, but in the exclusive or, same numbers will always give you a zero. So I ended up getting zeros except for this little tiny little second bit here that ended up being a one. So that gave me the number two. And that's pretty much all there is to exclusive ors. I'll leave it to you to play around with the and or the or with negative numbers and, and see what you get. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to work with negative numbers when you're doing bitwise operations. And that's all there is to bitwise operators. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope I didn't bore you to death. Please make sure you click on the like button below and subscribe to this channel for more exciting, boring JavaScript videos. Also, you can view all of our videos at www.boringjavascript.com or see everything we have at www.thevirtualwide.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.